In this video, I want to discuss the locked herringbone, a better herringbone. I really prefer the locked herringbone over a baseball stitch or any other stitch because of its unique quality in that it, this stitch is a locking stitch. And also you can work the seam. If the seam starts to helix one way or the other around whatever you are leathering, especially an eye, by manipulating the way that you pull the stitch, you can bring that seam back into true alignment. Very first thing you want to do is, is find your piece of leather. And you can see here in the photograph, I've got a, a piece of leather that I believe will be about the, the length I need. I don't know what the width is until I do a circumference measurement on the piece of wire that I'm leathering. So I'm going to cut a smaller piece, which you can see in this photograph, that uh, smaller section. I'm going to use that as a telltale to measure the circumference that I will need for the final uh, wire circumference and diameter. As you can see, this particular piece of leather is dry. It's not oiled. You really um, always want to oil, oil your leather, both uh, top and bottom, and, and even use a leather dressing. Some people like saddle soap. Uh, I've seen linseed oil and tar used. I generally don't like to use tar on leather. I think it tends to dry it out. Uh, Neatsfoot oil is tried and true. Uh, tallow even is fine, as long as you're not in the tropics, because it does tend to attract bees, etc. But on this particular leather, so that you can really see what is happening, I'm leaving it dry, and it will make it a little bit more difficult for me to work the leather uh, being dry and not uh, as supple as if it had oil. So now I've trimmed it down a touch and uh, I want to try the exact same thing again. The other thing, you can see that your measuring piece has to be cut from the same uh, piece of leather so that the widths, thicknesses, etc. Are, are the same. Here we can see that it is a little bit too long that it, the ends are already butting up and there's no way you could really get that piece of leather tight. So I'm going to make a quick cut on the piece of leather. Once again, it's an inexact science and you just want to trim a little bit and see how, how it goes. Now that's looking a lot better. I usually, as a rule of thumb, will trim so that uh, I have a gap about the thickness of the leather that I am leathering. If uh, I'm using small stuff yacht gear, I'll have a much smaller gap. I'll take the measuring piece to the piece of leather that I'm going to be using. Uh, measuring from one edge only, I make a couple of tick marks that will be the final circumference of the leather, the, uh, the width of the leather. I also want to make sure that I have uh, two square corners and that I have a straight edge at the bottom, uh, the, the very bottom of this piece of leather. I, trimmed with a, uh, a steel straight edge. I'm going to talk about a couple of the tools. You, you naturally need your knife, but uh, for cutting leather, I prefer using a Stanley knife uh, or even one of these handy scalpels look work great. So get your straight edge. I'm going to be cutting that, that top edge. And remember the bottom one's already uh, perpendicular or, or parallel and perpendicular to the, uh, to the marks that I made. So now when I'm cutting leather, I don't cut really hard at once. I do a series of five or six light passes. That prevents the knife from uh, dragging through the leather and actually slightly stretching it. This is critical on thin leather. This is pretty thick leather, but even still, if you do it that way, it makes for a nice clean edge. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, trim the corners, the four corners. So I'll grab my Handy scalpel again, I'll cut a 45 degree uh, uh, corner. I also like to slightly bevel it, and you can either bevel it now or bevel it a little bit later, the corners and the, uh, and the edges. The beveling prevents the leather from peeling back and uh, is for longevity of the leather. Next thing, we're gonna take a look at some tools. You got your pricker, which you'll be uh, using. I've got a, a beveling tool here. I uh, also have another one that's a little bit wider. That you use for 
putting the bevel on the edge, and then I've got the jogging wheel, which I'll use for making marks for the holes. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to mark for the holes using the jogging wheel. I'm going to measure down about uh, either a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch, depending upon the thickness of the leather. On this one here, I'm going to go down about a, a quarter of an inch, which should be fine. On thin leather, you don't want to uh, have too little uh, material between the hole and the edge because it can tear through quite easily. This leather, once again, is very thick, so a quarter inch should be more than sufficient. So I did my two tick marks at a quarter inch. I'm going to get my straight edge, and I will grab my jogging wheel and run it down the length. Now, I always want to start on the same side, going, in this case, from right to left. So at the bottom, when I do the jogging wheel, I'm going to want to start here going that direction and not the other way. So now after you've done the jogging wheel on both sides, you can see the little impressions that it left. Uh, I'm going to want to probably punch every other hole on this size leather. Uh, once again, it's a judgment call, but you can see if every other hole will probably do well. So I'm going to grab my leather punch. I want to go down to a, as small a hole as possible. So probably be using a um, number 14 or number 15 sail needle on this. So um, let me do a test punch here. That might still be a little bit too big. I'm going to take it down to the very lowest lowest punch on this uh, on this leather punch and that should do it. So now I'm going to do a punch on the one side on both the top and the bottom so that I have a registration. I know which direction I'm starting from. And I'm just going to work my way down the leather, punching every other hole on both sides. Uh, this is a nice tedious process, but uh, it builds muscles and strong minds, uh, etc. So just keep on punching. Holes punched. Now it's time to actually do the beveling. And uh, this is where that handy dandy beveling tool will help out. Uh, you can see this one's a little dull. I could. Uh, sharpen it on a, a, a stone. But um, I want to get an angled edge, about a 45 degree, as you can see there. And what that does is, when it wraps around, that angled edge helps the stitches to lie flat. And everything is about preventing chafe. I guess sailors are always into preventing chafe and bad beer. But um, So you're going to want to use your beveling tool and go over all four sides etc. If you don't have a beveling tool, you can use a scalpel or a Stanley knife or a, or a sharp knife. And it's just a matter of lining um, your piece of leather along an edge and just slowly dragging the, the knife, the sharp knife, along the edge to get that bevel. As you can see here, it's not that hard and uh, it's actually fairly, uh, fairly fast. And after you've done it a while, you can get quite good. Once that's done, you want to make sure that um, both the start and the finish, the ends are beveled as well, and all those little corners, those four corners. This beveling prevents the leather, as I mentioned earlier, from curling back and uh, uh, from um, possibly after a couple of years looking, uh, looking pretty, pretty bad. So here you can see we've got nice bevels along all the corners. And... Uh, It'd be nice if this was a little more supple. Um, if you want, you can use a pair of pinking shears uh, on smaller leather and, and actually on the end trim, uh, trim that end with some pinked, uh, a pinked edge and uh, have it look quite nice. But uh, uh, on this application, it's just going to be a standard leather. So we'll have the straight edges and the straight ends. And there we go. Once you have the holes cut and uh, everything, all the beveling is done, uh, it's time to bring the leather over to the piece of wire. You can see this is going to be quite stiff and a little bit hard to work with because there is no oil. Because as I mentioned, I didn't want that to interfere with uh, visually seeing what's happening. So I'm going to have to work the leather back and forth to try and, and make it supple enough 
to go on the wire. The other thing I'm going to do is use these little nippers that you can see here. Uh, a couple of these wee nippers will certainly make life a lot easier and uh, help um, in keeping the seam nice and straight. So put the leather where you want it to go on the piece of wire. Once again, this is just a short demonstration piece. I always work from my uh, uh, left to my right, so uh, I'm going to be work putting these nippers on towards my start point. So uh, you can see these nippers are quite easy, just a little figure eight overhand knot and uh, pass through and uh, come up around forming a bite. You know, what you're doing is creating a little purchase here. And you don't want to go too hard, just snug it up and then throw in a hitch to hold the uh, hold the tension and uh, this will help guide you on your initial couple of stitches and, and hopefully keep the seam nice and straight. The, the hallmark of a good leathering job is to have a straight seam and not have it wander around the circumference of an eye or down the length of a foot rope uh, making a, a big ugly helix. And as I mentioned earlier, that um, ability of the locked herringbone to create a nice straight seam is the hallmark of this particular stitch, and it is just a really handy stitch. I hope throughout this video you've noticed that nice Persian rug uh, carpet. I think every rigging loft uh, should have one. It's nice on the bare feet. Once you have the leather in position, it's time to choose your needle. Like I say, for this particular leather job, I could use a, a number 15 to be fine. And I'm going to want to use uh, sail twine and uh, I'm going to spool off two full fathoms, which will make about one, uh, one fathom on the needle. I don't want to have too much thread because I don't want to do a, spend a lot of time pulling thread through. Once I have the uh, needle threaded, I want to put a little stopper knot, as you can see here, and I want to pass it through the uh, either side, either uh, the far side or the near side, depending upon your preference of either working to your right or to your left. As you can see, I like working from my left to my right. I'm standing on the far side, so I'm going to do my stopper knot on the near side towards me. I'm going to lay the tail alongside the uh, leather so it's captured, and then I'm just going to do one or two, you know, usually two little figure eight passes with a final overhand pass to seat the leather at the start to, to get a, a good tight start. So you can see I'm pulling it through. Now I will try and cinch it up and uh, you want to make sure everything looks good at the very beginning so that uh, you have a nice a nice start. Once again, this leather is real dry, so uh, pulling it together is going to be a little difficult at the beginning. It should, as we go down the leather, get easier. So I've got my figure eight. Now I'm going to go back through that far hole just for the start. Now, uh, there are different ways of doing the start, and that's not part of this herringbone. Uh, you, however you have done your start in the past, just uh, feel free to continue doing it uh, doing it that way. But uh, you can see here I'm doing starting with a standard herringbone. So I've got a couple of passes. I sink the stitches, pull it tight, and that is your classic herringbone. It's going, the thread, the sail twine is going across, and then I am going to feed the needle through the hole on the side opposite me. You can see I'm on this side, I'm going to pass it on the side opposite. I'm working once again from my left to my right. I'm going to pull the stitch through. Now on a <clears throat> standard herringbone, I would sink it all the way through. I would put my second stitch on the side nearest me. I would angle the needle so that it was on the backward side of the, the hitch and then pull it forward. You can see that it creates uh, the standard herringbone. A locked herringbone, we don't want to pull that first bite all the way through. So as you can see, I've gone on through the opposite side, and now I'm going to back that first little overhand pass. There you go. Just watch. And instead of doing the standard herringbone going to the left, I'm going to go through that bite. So now when I, when I sink that hitch tight, 
it's going to draw it together perpendicular and it's also going to lock the stitch. There we go. So now pass it through the hole opposite you. As you can see here, pass it through. Do not pull the bite all the way through. Just use your finger, etc. Just leave a little bite. Now go through the hole on the side that you're standing and through the bite. Always on the back side of the direction you're going, not, not on the forward side. Once you have that on the back side, pull the, pull the, uh, the twine through. You can see I pull a little bit on that side. I can, I can hold this, the stitch and then draw it tight. Yeah, that one occasionally, you know, your twine doesn't uh, cooperate, but okay, there I'm sinking the stitch and when my arm gets out of the way, you can see how I'm, I can let go of the stitch and it's locked. <clears throat> it's not going to back out. It is a real handy stitch. So we're just going to do this working along. And the other beautiful thing here is that you can draw the leather together. If the seam starts working one way or the other, if the uh, seam is no longer straight, it starts helixing, you can pull either the side that is closest to you, the stitch to, to work the leather back over to you, or you can pull the other bite and draw the leather the opposite direction. So here you can see that I'm going, well, let's get these little, those are the initial tails. But, uh, I'll just stick them up out of the way. Okay. Occasionally, there we go. All right, so I've not pulled the bite tight yet. I've gone under the bite and I'm going on the back side of the way that I'm traveling. This way I can pull and I can angle. I can angle my seam. If it's starting to angle up towards the camera, towards uh, the far side, I can really pull on this side and bring it back down that way. If it's going the other way, I cannot pull as hard on that side and pull harder on the side to me and move it the other way so I can actually steer the stitch. This is a very, very handy uh, stitch and uh, I hope that you'll like it as much as I do. So I'm gonna pull down here. I'm gonna just hold the tension, doesn't take much. Draw the, the twine through and then pull the other way and it's locked. So. Once again, I'm going to go the hole opposite me. Don't pull it all the way through the hole on my side and then through the bite. And then either pull the bite or the initial stitch, depending upon if you want the stitch, the seam to move to the left, to the right, up or down. It uh, is very handy. And that's it. And by doing that, we can keep that seam absolutely top dead center and prevent it from rolling off. Uh, it really is a handy, handy stitch. When you get up to your nipper, just cut it. And naturally don't cut your, your, your herringbone stitch and then just continue. So the only difference between this and a standard herringbone is right there, do not pull that initial bite all the way through. And then pull one side hold the tension, and then pull the other side. And by working it one way or the other, you can see you can get a really nice, tight, tight stitch. And we'll just continue on uh, right on down the, uh, right on down the length of leather. Now, the marriage, et cetera, is like any standard marriage on, uh, whether it's a baseball stitch or herringbone stitch. So however you've done that in the past, that's fine. The main thing about this stitch is that initial bite. You're not pulling it tight and that's allowing you to lock the stitch and also to drive the stitch and steer it. And it's quite easy. There you go. Now let's say um, 
this is uh, uh, the end. Uh, I want to do my, my finish because, uh, once again, this is just a demonstration. I'm going to do my standard stitch like I was going to do a, a locked herringbone, except I'm going to go underneath the last stitch, and I'm going to go underneath the stitch uh, before that. Basically, this is just forming a back stitch, you know, your standard, standard back stitch. You want to sink it once or twice and then cut it off. And uh, very important thing is once you have it all done, is to grab your spike and to roll your spike up and down the stitches to seat them. You really want to have the stitches not proud at all. And uh, once they have, have seated into the leather, that's basically it. And you have a nice locked herringbone. And uh, I hope you like it as much as I do. It's a great stitch. Thanks for watching.